Meteorologist Kelly Rudin here for Cleveland.com. On the radar this week, we're talking tsunamis on the Great Lakes. Yes, that's right, tsunamis can form on the Great Lakes, but not the scary, towering, dangerous kinds you see in movies. The type of tsunamis that are possible on the Great Lakes are called meteo tsunamis, which have characteristics similar to earthquake-generated tsunamis, but are instead caused by air pressure disturbances often associated with fast-moving weather systems, such as squall lines, according to the National Weather Service. Several factors affect the development of a meteo tsunami, such as the intensity, direction, and speed of the atmospheric disturbance as it travels over a water body, along with the depth of the water. Similar to an earthquake-generated tsunami, meteo tsunamis affect the full depth of the body of water and aren't considered dangerous until they hit shallow water, which triggers the waves to slow down and increase in height and intensity. If the waves are near semi-enclosed water bodies like harbors, inlets, or bays, greater magnification of the waves can occur. But even then, we're talking mostly small waves. Most are too small to notice, but some larger meteo tsunamis have been known to cause damage and even fatalities. In the United States, meteo tsunamis are most common on the Gulf of Mexico, the East Coast, and of course the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes average 106 meteo tsunamis a year, according to the Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research. On May 27, 2012, a seven-foot wave off Cleveland swept beachgoers off their feet and swamped boats and harbors. Back in June in 1954, a 10-foot meteo tsunami wave in Lake Michigan struck the shoreline off Chicago, pushing people off piers. Seven people died. That's all for this week's On the Radar, and don't forget to check back in for another episode next Tuesday.